Good evening, you two pipe smokers. So this is a different perspective. Uh, I had to go to a friend's funeral. I had to drive all the way to the Bronx, about an hour and a half from where I live. I'm on the way back. So I figured I'd do a video road ramble. So knowing I was going to the Bronx, I know in Yonkers, which I have to pass to come back home, I know there's a good cigar store there, so I stopped. And they redid it since I've been there the last time. And they had some uh, new pipe blends that I didn't see before. And they had one King Arthur, so of course I had to have that one. But it sparked something in my head. And I've been wondering about this a long time. I wonder if you took all the blends out there, and there's hundreds, how many are there really? What I mean by that is like uh, Captain Black Royal, which I like. How many names has that been gone under? Uh, Lane 1Q is said to be the same. Uh, many tobacco stores labeled it something else. House blends. And so you have to wonder. Like Cornell, Cornell and Deal, all their different blends, a lot of them have to be mixed and between one another to create a new blend. I don't think they totally start from scratch. I mean, maybe I'm wrong about that, but... It's just as intriguing. I wonder how much of it's more of a mind game than uh, anything else. It's, all the, it's just a mixture of the, the different components. The topping is where it gets a little fuzzy. I guess that's where the chemistry part comes in. <clears throat> but if it's just tobacco, the raw tobacco, they only have really, what, six or seven tobaccos to choose from? Dark Kentucky, Virginia, Red Virginia, Stowe's Virginia, Cavendish, Latakia, Perique. And everything's just a combination of those tobaccos. just um, got me thinking. I wonder if you were to narrow it down and you knew the recipes or all of them, how much are really so similar, I think it'd be shocking. <clears throat> and it probably goes to marketing. Like, I'll admit, I go a lot of times for the name. If the name intrigues me, like the one in the store tonight, King Arthur. My name's Art, so it seemed appropriate. <clears throat> Meanwhile, that's probably some standard mixture produced by some company, and he put it in a jar and labeled it King Arthur. And probably bumped it up two or three dollars an ounce more. <laughs> anyway, beautiful cigar store. Big, big walk-in humidor. Next to it, a beautiful, beautiful cigar lounge.
very well done. The ventilation was actually pretty, uh, pretty good. Some of them are awful. I went in one, well, maybe about eight months ago in Connecticut. I'm telling you, this was like walking into a smoke screen. I was in that store for maybe 10 minutes. My wife was waiting in the car. And when I came out, she says, man, you stink of smoke. <laughs> And you got guys in there sitting on a, in a leather chair, reading a book, drinking coffee, so they know he's parked there for at least a half hour or an hour. I bet you his whites of his eyes are yellow by the time he leaves. <laughs> and this place would take 20 coats of paint to refresh in this place. I mean, it was unbelievable. I walked out, I was almost feeling woozy from it. Anyway, it's a pretty cool perspective at night, huh? Never did a night drive video. Anyway, I haven't been feeling good, and then I uh, had a, unfortunately, my friend I grew up with, went to school with, his father passed away. Uh, in 93, God bless him. And he used to take us to school, so uh, <clears throat> I had to go pay my respects. Met a lot of people I haven't seen in years. <clears throat> Which is unfortunate that it takes somebody to die to see him, but... <clears throat> you know, I guess we all get caught up in life, and... Uh, we lose touch of people, sometimes people we really care about. And yet, when you meet them again, and it's like 10 years passes and you haven't seen them, it's like you've seen them yesterday. And you feel good, but at the same time you feel bad. Because you wonder, is it going to take somebody else dying before I see you again? to a few, uh, as many of you know, transmission forums, and uh, like on YouTube, I create a lot of friends I have in the trade all over the world, and one guy wrote something in an email one day, and it sticks in my mind, and I think about it almost every day, but probably at least once a week. And he says, man builds his own prisons. And that's such a true statement. You know, we do that in so many ways that we really don't mean to, but it just happens. Like maybe you don't take care of yourself as well as you should, and then you suffer the consequences. You, you're building your own prison, or you snap at your wife when you don't mean to. buy something you shouldn't have bought and now it means you either have to work harder to pay for it so 
that statement that it's amazing how those simple little words, man builds his own prison, mean so much. And yet it's so hard to change. So you need to try to change, which I do, but it's very hard. You develop patterns, habits, good or bad. And you become complacent in everything. Driving to work, you stop at the same gas station, you stop at the same place for coffee, you take the same road. The scenery never changes. You don't try a different way. Maybe you see something different. You don't try a different coffee shop. You do the same thing in the morning. Wake up, take a shower, brush your teeth, make the coffee. Let the dogs out. Get in your car, turn on the news, take the same road for 20 years. probably happens with tobacco. You get into a tobacco rut. You smoke the same blend every day. But you know what's interesting? I've had a cold the last few days. So I haven't been smoking a pipe at all. So today I fried up a bowl. I can taste a little something. And, um, you know, I think that's not a bad idea, is to take a break from smoking a pipe every once in a while and give your mouth a two or three day rest. Even though, like, I use filtered pipes, I don't get tongue bite. But, you know, maybe you sort of do lose some sensitivity in your tongue by smoking every day. Because <clears throat> the tobacco definitely did taste different today. Uh, and I don't think because of the, us uh, being sick, I think it's just, uh, it didn't taste bad at all. It tasted good actually, but I wonder. That's a good question. If any of you experienced that, you took a break from smoking two or three days, did you find a drastic difference in flavor going back to the tobacco three days later? <clears throat> Tell you what, this video camera is a pretty good night. Uh, night vision. Well, I know the deer are in the move up here. You gotta watch for deer. Because they're uh, definitely mating season. Although now 9 o'clock is usually not the bad time. Early morning and early evening is the worst. If 
anybody watches uh, Ben the Artful Codger, well, I mean, who doesn't watch Ben the Artful Codger? Boy, he really stripped his basement down to the bare walls. I see he found his leak, that crack in the foundation, but I don't know if he watches my videos, but all I can say is this, and I'm not an expert on the subject, but I know a little bit. If you think you're going to waterproof that basement by fixing that crack from the inside, you're sadly mistaken. It really can't be done effectively. You got to go outside. You got to dig down, patch it on both sides, divert the water away from the foundation with a curtain drain, or put a curtain drain inside. Like that bee dry system. That's the only way to be assured you address the problem. I've been there. One of the houses I had, it had the clay curtain drain which deteriorates over time and uh, had to dig down put new pipe gravel then tar the foundation fill any cracks put up a membrane which they got a really good products out there now then you have a system that will never even if there's a gaping hole in the wall, unless it broke that membrane, you're not going to get water in the house. <clears throat> anyway, I'll let you guys go. Hope you enjoyed that nighttime video. Catch you on the next one. Thank you.